Hey you guys, welcome back to part 12 of this polymer clay time lapse sculpting demonstration where I'm making a little elephant. In this video, I do the texturing. I do several different techniques, but I'll show you them all a little bit of it in this video. For those of you new, this is an ongoing video series where I started with just foil and wire. 12 videos later, you get what you see here. And it's all done in time lapse, so I hope you check it out. And consider subscribing, it would mean the world to me. I know this video seems a little long, but I promise you it's an amazing adventure and you'll get drawn in right away. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to be using just some regular rubbing alcohol, a little cup to put that in, a nylon brush, um, a couple little texturing tools, just a dentist pick in that thing I showed you in the last video. And this is Sculpey Clay Softener. I'm going to use this to soften up the texturing. You can also use like mineral oil or baby oil. But anyways, that's pretty much the materials I'm using for this video. I will. You have to use alcohol at least to clean your brush. Because as you go along doing this, it gets gummed up really bad. Okay, I'm going to start with the face area and the trunk. This, this general area right here and I'm going to apply some of this directly onto it. I'm just going to go with a couple drops for now. Maybe a few. Maybe four. <laughs> and then take my brush and kind of spread that around first before I actually get going. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and go along the texture marks that I made. You'll see it softening up quite a bit and the more I go with it the more natural it'll look or at least it'll look better than what the tool marks did to speed things up I can take a tool and, and bevel corners any kind of sharp corners I can bevel them a little bit so this process of softening it with the brush doesn't take forever and I've mentioned this in quite a few videos. I got this little thing that I do. I spin the brush, kind of twirl it around while pressing down. It really balances everything out somehow. This is something you definitely have to take your time with. You can't force it to break down fast anyways. It'll just wind up defeating the whole purpose. You only need a little bit of this stuff. It really does go a long, long way. I'm going to keep working these heavy, deep lines right here, the gouges. That actually looks really, really good right here, where it's all softened up. I'm going to bevel this edge right here, like that. See, I didn't take too much clay off of there, just a little bit. You can see the snotty looking stuff right there. If you're wondering why I'm going through the efforts of cleaning this up, you know, the gouges I made in the last video, initially that's all I was going to do was clean this up. And it would be pretty much looking like the original sculpture I was going by. But I decided to go a little bit further that's why this video is a little longer. So I wanted to show you how I'd go about at least cleaning up the gouges I made in the last video. Right now I'm just dressing up that ear. I'm trying to make it look a little bit better. Just rubbing that clay softener all around on it pretty much helped. And what I'm actually doing with those two different liquids, I found myself using the clay softener to loosen everything up. And then once I was done, I brushed off some of the stickiness with the alcohol. Kind of clean up that gooiness. Because it don't have to stay sticky, I guess, if you don't want, want it to. Because you can just clean it with alcohol. So for these next few scenes, I'm just showing you how I would go about cleaning, cleaning that up. And getting it ready. Technically, we could stop right there at this point, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I didn't include all the scenes of cleaning this, just mainly 
a few of them enough to show you what's going on here you can see me beveling the edges of some of these cuts to speed up the process and it's pretty much self-explanatory I wanted to show you a little bit of each part of what I'm doing because I had quite a bit of footage to go through this is something you definitely got to take your time with when working with this you know softening up the texturing and text actually texturing uh, the more time you put into it the better it'll look pretty much I'm not really really good at it like I mentioned before and I think I got it looking pretty decent between the different styles of texturing I did for this elephant I was encouraged to do some more texturing on it you know to go a little bit further after looking it up on the on the internet they are some rough looking creatures I mean huge huge like desert cracks in their skin just amazing for textured standards <laughs> Um, I couldn't think of anything more interesting other than maybe a pug or a hairless cat. But they are definitely interesting creatures as far as texture goes. There's, It's everywhere. You can't really mess it up. And then I thought this was a nice looking scene. How it's all shiny. The face of the elephant. I also filled in some of those gaps on the side. The gouges I mean. I found them to be a little like too much and there was a couple I filled in I just pushed a little tiny snake in it and smoothed it you know level right here I'm fixing up the tail trying to take some of the harshness of the scratches out of that as well and I keep alternating between the brush and the dentist pick I added on some texturing on the back of the neck. It needed it. So that was some something that was real easy to do, real quick, quick, quick and easy. And now is when all this real intricate editing that I like to do where I cut out the inactive scenes. It takes me quite a while but it reduces the overall length of the video so when I go to shrink it down I don't have too much playing too fast and nothing is playing faster than times four did you see me dual wielding I was dual wielding so I'm just lining on a bunch of lines and I'm trying to overlap them in at least two different directions or even three directions a lot of cross hatching so to speak and I do believe I only showed one side of this elephant to cut down on the length of the video but like I said I, I do believe I'm showing enough to give you an idea of what goes into doing this I also cut the bottom that platform thing away I didn't really like it. I didn't want to bake it with that. Uh, it left these little pads on its feet. I didn't want to cut those off because I knew there'd be wire under there. And it just it was too much to fuss with. So I'm leaving it. Once again, something has flip-flops. This is the second time. That three-headed dragon had some pads underneath its feet. People were like, why is it wearing flip-flops? So now I'm doing the other side of this elephant's face, getting some texturing going. If you watch closely, like if you watch a couple times or maybe even a few times, you'll see how I'm becoming adaptive in my texturing. The actual technique I'm using or the style, it changes slowly. That's because I'm, I'm trying to figure this out as I go. You know, what would work, what works, what doesn't work. And that's mainly what hurts me when I'm trying to do time lapse. It's a lot of guessing and figuring it out. And that just takes up a lot of time to try to show everything. 
unless you want to sit through like an hour long movie or I can speed it up even quicker I don't want to play too fast because it's hard for you to follow it technically this could be played at a quarter speed and you'll watch it at normal time I do think although I don't know how that would sound So this is the last little bit of the lining and this could be even considered this could be considered a stopping point too. I mean it could be this could be done. It looks probably a little better than it did, you know, just with the heavy gouges because there's a little more realism going on there, more texturing. Now as far as the directional patterns of the textures and stuff, I don't think they're correct or accurate. But, you know, I try. You just got to try to figure out how the skin moves in multiple directions, how that will make wrinkles form on the, the body. I think I got it kind of close. I even went as far as texturing up the tail a little bit. But what you're going to see here in a second is a another style of texturing that I did almost at the last second I decided to try this. And I, I really like it. Just some last little touch-ups here. So it's right here. I just take this dentist pick and I'm, I'm alternating almost like in a plus sign all over and pressing down on the clay and denting it and once I got a little area all finished nice and roughed up I guess I mean it totally destroys what I just did earlier I know but after I clean it up with the the clay softener get it really worked up and like in a slurry it fills all that in the cracks and it kind of rounds off everything and it it makes it look rather interesting I'm not gonna say that's exactly how an elephant looks if anything it probably looks more like an armadillo but it's very very textured looking and it was fast and easy to do so I, I think it looks pretty pretty decent I mean, as opposed to just focusing and trying to texture this for four years to make it look like a real elephant. It's a pretty decent little technique, I think. You can see how it evened out a little bit after brushing it down really well. I had to really bear down on it a little bit. And I did it a little bit on the eye the eyelid because it was really really textured too I looked at some of those pictures and look how the eye looks after getting it shiny so after this is baked I'll definitely have to put some glaze or something on that and make it nice and shiny going around the mouth really really helped it it made it wrinkly and it just gave it a whole lot of characteristics after I did that I come back and I try to redo some lines that need to be there and all and I tried it again on this leg and I went a little overboard as far as how hard I'm pressing and it's too consistent it needs to be more like spread apart in some areas and maybe closer and I just it was too uniform I guess is what I'm looking for so I didn't like it immediately I didn't like it and I remember myself just brushing it you know working it away trying to get rid of it and I found after doing that after working all that stuff into a slurry and filling in the cracks and stuff I found it to be still good looking it, it helped it added a bunch of uh, subtle 
details everywhere that I could play off of and, you know, work with, you know, later on. So that's what you see me doing there is I'm getting, I got it really, really wet to kind of like delete what I just did. And I dried it off with a rag. So then I just took the tool and then I went back and started doing that again. This time with a little more control, a little less gung-ho-ness. And I just did little areas, dabbing it with that tool and then brushing it away to see how it turned out. I found that you just do areas that need it, areas that are too dry or areas that are just too plain looking. So this is pretty much it for this leg area. I do believe you can see another area on there where I textured off camera. And I'm only doing the face, leg, and part of the butt. I'll show you part of the butt here in a second. And that'll close up this video. I decided I'm going to go ahead and bake this. I asked you guys in the last video, what do you think? Should I you know, take it apart to save the clay or should I bake it? A couple of you replied saying bake it. And I thought that was, uh, I'll go I'll go with that, you know. Um, mainly I want to get rid of this mixture that I had. I made a mixture of clay quite a while ago. It's a 50-50 mixture of Super Sculpey and Super Sculpey Firm. That's the pink and gray clay mixed together. And I found it to be not quite as durable as the Super Sculpey alone. And I haven't used Firm by itself. So I have a whole box of that. I'll want to try that. And I'm going to be wanting to try other clays too. Like um, Living Doll. I've been wanting to try it. I haven't tried it yet. And I think I'm going to move just to Super Sculpey after this. I find it to be a little more durable than this particular mixture. You can see me texturing this tail. I'm kind of doing the, all the work a little differently. Like I said earlier, it's kind of adaptive, the texturing technique. Uh, I suppose once I got something I was really, really happy with, a particular style, that I would you know, keep that. Haven't found that yet. I'm just kind of still exploring with this. Uh, as far as texturing go, I think, I think this is probably my best so far. It is definitely the most intensive as far as how much goes on. There's a lot of texture on an elephant. They need some lotion badly. But I'm finishing this up this is pretty much it for this video. You guys have survived. It's a very, very long video. I appreciate you for taking, you know, all the time to watch this. In the next video, I will be baking this thing. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you how I set everything up and make sure everything's clear and understood. And we'll pop this sucker in the oven and see how it comes out. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to wrapping this project up. Let me know what you think about this texturing. And anyways, looking forward to hearing from everybody. Please, please, please like this video. It helps me. I'm trying to grow on YouTube and I can only do it with you guys. I can't do it by myself. Thank you for, you know, your time and your comments and your continued support. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, thank you so much for watching.